Welcome to the Tall Girl Tuesday podcast. It's your girl, Danny, And on this week's episode, I do have Tashira, who is a licensed social worker and the CEO and founder of Leave Inspired. Good evening. How are you today? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for being on the show. So let's first start off with telling the people about yourself, where are you from, things like that. So my name is Tashira. I'm born and raised in Philadelphia. Yes, the city of cheese steaks. Um, (laughs) I am a licensed social worker and I'm also a candidate, um, a clinical candidate. So I am receiving my supervision hours so that I can be a licensed clinical social worker, you know, get the private practice life going. Um, And I'm working on my brand, Leave Inspired. I'm all about inspiration. Okay, awesome. So like, were you born in Philly, born and raised, or did you kind of like move there? Yeah, I'm born and raised in Philly. Nice. I'm a Philly John. Oh, okay, I have an episode <laughs> about that. You might have to listen to it. I have an episode about that. A friend of mine who came on, and he's from Philly, and we talked about just the thing, what's a, I asked him, what's a John, and oh, it was, it's a really funny episode. If you get a chance, check it out. It's called, um, Philly men are different. Yes. You might even know him. I don't know. I'm not saying y'all know each other, but you might even know him. Um, so yeah, that, that was a fun episode. I love Philly. I lived in South Jersey for five years. Okay. So we used to come over to Philly all the time to hang uh-huh. out to party. That's where it was at. Because South yeah. Jersey is like the birds, <laughs> you know, suburbs is corny. Yeah, okay. yeah. That is nothing like the Philly nightlife. I say that all the time. I love it. Absolutely. And I'm a North Jersey girl and I couldn't stand New York, even really to this day. I don't like to go to New York. Really? But Philly, the vibe is just different. Like people will know what I'm saying if they compare the two. Mm-hmm. You ever like hung out in New York? I New York is actually one of my favorite cities. I haven't been in a minute. I've been actually trying to get to North Jersey because uh, I have never been out that way. I spend a lot of time in South Jersey, obviously, but it's right there across the bridge. Um, but I haven't been out that way in a long time, but I'm making it my duty to get up there just to check it out, see what's happening. Sure. Let me know if you want to do some stuff. I can give you some places, some recommendations. Yeah. Yeah. Know. <laughs> so go ahead and tell us about leave inspired what is leave inspired okay so um we'll give a little background so leave inspired actually started as a blog back in 2017 um and so i was like consistently blogging probably for about two or three years um before i knew that like i needed to take it a little further so in 2017 i had um went to a life coaching program to get certified as a life coach. But back then I felt like I was too young to be a life coach. So I was like, you know what? I feel like I need some more life experience. I was about to start grad school anyway. So I was like, let me just do that. Then I was like, well, the blogging thing, it was, it was going good, but I just knew that I needed to do more. So I was like, all right, maybe I need to turn this. I had nothing legalized for Leave Inspired. So like the name wasn't protected. I didn't have no the text entity like none of that yet because I was still trying to figure out what I wanted to do so it just kind of had like a social media presence um so I was like all right maybe I'm gonna do a nonprofit organization that was popping like at the time like people were popping up helping teen girls doing this doing that and then I was like well how about I mentor let me jump on board with somebody else's nonprofit and kind of just see what's what they do behind the scenes to see if that's really for me I was like no nah, I don't think that's what leaving spice supposed to be about so I was like, what am I supposed to do with these natural gifts I have, right? Being the go-to person and always giving guidance and inspiration to people. And I was like, people always feel empowered after they speak to me, right? They always leave inspired. So that's kind of how the name came about. And I was like, man, I'm about to like do some life coaching, right? And then trying to find like the niche. Cause I was like, well, who am I gonna provide coaching for? And then I'm like, I'm getting this master's degree in social work. Like, I gotta make this work for me. So I ended up coming down with everything, making a niche. And I was like, you know what? My blog was actually um, talking about me navigating mental health, right? And navigating it in my 20s. So I was like, you know what? That's gonna be my niche. Like, 
I need to provide personal development coaching for Black women in their 20s. Because when you think about it, during our adolescent stage, right, we're trying to figure out who we are, where we're fitting in at, what's our sexuality, all that stuff. And when you think about the 20s, it's like the same thing, but now you're trying to figure out where you're fitting in at the workplace, right? Like your social life is, is changing. You go on this way, which is left to my else going that way. People will start making families, people get married, like we're all in different places. So I'm like, it's still kind of like that development stage of like adulthood. So I was like, so many of us coming from different backgrounds need guidance. Like for me, I was, you know, raised by a single mom. She had me at 18. So everything my mom knew, we pretty much grew up together. So it was like anything she knew, whatever she had, she told to me when I was 18, she's like, look, I taught you everything I know. There are going to be other women that come along your path that's going to show you things that I couldn't. Um, so a lot of that put me ahead of a lot of my peers, um, made me wise beyond my years because of the things I had to see growing up. Wasn't always, you know, pretty. Um, and not always living in the best um, situations and just knowing about a lot of stuff that probably a lot of kids don't need to know about. Um, and I was like, you know what? I need to take those experiences that God gave me and I need to pour that back out mm -hmm. to people in my age. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like how it's shaped to be what it is. And I'm all about mental health. So if you look at my page, you're gonna get a bit of wellness, you're gonna get mental health stuff, you're gonna get inspiration, all that. But I'm all about helping people get to their actualized self, like the person that they want to be, desire to be. And I know that that, that training starts now, like in our 20s. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's amazing. So what year did you start? Like what year was Leave Inspired founded? If you, if you have <laughs> 2017. <it. laughs> 2017, and okay. it just got legalized last year during all the like, I just got my, tra actually the trademark took like a whole year. I just got my trademark in the mail probably like last month. Congratulations, um, that's Thank you, wow. yeah. Um, so it was, it was founded in 2017. Yep. Okay. So did you have someone that had to help you with the business side of things or did you kind of just like do your own research and, you know, so, <laughs> so I, I don't got, I had got me a coach, right? So it, it takes a village. Um, and I had somebody kind of bless me. They was like, listen, I'm gonna do this for free for you. Mm -hmm. So they were helping me. Um, I, and, and so I'm gonna back up a little bit. I went to the only Catholic vocational school in Philly. Um, at the time it was called Mercy, Mercy Vocational High School and I studied business, that was my, my vocation there. So I always had that business part of me even though I went to school for psychology and I went to school to get my master's and stuff like that and social work. Um, I always had that and I always kept buying business books and one of my closest friends, we both have our trade in that. So we always are in each other's ears about what we need to do and finding resources. But I did get me a coach to help. And they're kind of taking advantage of free webinars and reading and stuff like that. And then I just had people gave me resources to get it like legalized. I didn't know how to, to do that. Um, and as far as the finance side, my mom background is in finance and um, accounting and finance. So she was teaching me about the stuff I need to know about tax and stuff like that. So people, a village, you know, piecing together. <laughs> Amazing. I'll just, when I listen to you talking, that's why I like having people on the show such as yourself, because I have things that I want to do with my brand because Tall Girl Tuesday is an LLC, but I feel like I just keep hitting these walls with research and I'm just sitting here like, and I'm listening to you talk. I'm like, it's a way to get it done. I just got to figure out, I got to get the right people in place to assist me, but it's like, where are they? You know? So I'm like, I'm not doing enough. I, I'm, I'm, uh, in my mind, I'm like, okay, I'm not really, I'm not going as hard as I, I should be. Absolutely, yeah. And I, I am a opportunity, opportunist and in a good way. Like I'm always searching for those people. So you, if I ever gave someone my password and stuff, to my social media, all you're going to see is all inspiration stuff, people that's making moves, people doing stuff, people that got their business and I'm learning from them. That's how you got to tailor those things when you're trying to walk in a certain way mm -hmm. and you got things that you're trying to do, like you got to put yourself in those virtual spaces. And now we're going to now put ourselves in the physical spaces now soon. Um, but it's going to come books, resources, right. let, opening your mouth and let people know what you need. Yeah. Mm, see, that's the struggle for me right there. I sit on my, my, I'm wearing this shirt for a reason. We'll get to that. I sit <laughs> on that, you know, part mm -hmm. of it, because I feel like people don't, people have that F your dreams mentality. Then the other part is like, do I trust you with my brand? You know? There you go. That's it. It's the uh -huh. trust for me. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes. 
trust. <laughs> it's the trust for me. So what type of services do you provide? Um, so when I think, when I talk about Leave Inspire is like two pillars of it, where it's the coaching side of it. And then it's the consultation side. So the coaching side is the personal development coaching for black women in their twenties. Um, so that's helping them with their executive functioning skills, like planning, time management, organizing, all of that transitions out of college, building self-esteem, passion, rediscovery, right. Providing professional growth and direction, helping them with all those things, because some people, they graduate high school, they don't go to college, they go to a trade school, right? So where they're learning all these skills that may not be, everybody's situations are different. Some of us, we go to college, we come out, we still like, oh, okay. You still need, we still need guidance. You still need that. And I, and I find even people that's in their thirties still trying to figure stuff out because they spent the twenties just doing whatever, right? Uh, no one's really investing in their personal development. They just living it up is whatever. And then they find themselves like now they're a parent, right? Now they, fully moved out their parents' house and they own their own. Um, so helping them kind of like get to a specific point and so somebody else can jump in. The consultation side is doing a lot of psychoeducation workshops. So going to these schools, these colleges, maybe nonprofit organizations and teaching the black community about mental health. You know, why am I, you know, getting a bunch of headaches and stomach aches all the time? What's going on with me? It may not be a physical illness, it's somatic symptoms to your anxiety, right? So, and then all of us don't know that. So educating them on it so that when they're going to seek help, they don't feel like they can't trust the person on the other side of the, um, on the, other side of the room. Right. So when you have knowledge about something, you have confidence, you have assertiveness, you, you feel secure in making a decision about what you're trying to do. So that's what Leave Inspire is about. And also teaching them about the eight dimensions of wellness and how we need to be incorporating those things um, in our lives and um, making sure that we're fulfilling each part of them too. So, yeah. That's amazing. So I'm just listening to you and I'm thinking like um, for my season finale, I had Principal Akbar Cook from Lassa High School in Newark, shout out to Cook. And he was saying how it's important to prepare the kids for what's next. It might, it doesn't look like college for everybody. So you have to meet the um, kids where they are and provide those services for them, whatever that may be, whatever they're good at all right, let's get you into a trade school or military, whatever it is, but you know, you're good at something. So we have to tap into that and make sure, you know, that you're doing what you have to do. So that's amazing because I'm just thinking about me growing up and what it was like for me when I was in high school, it was like, either you're going to college or you're just going to get a job at, at, at a fast food restaurant. Right. There was nothing or no one who was really pushing a narrative that college is not for everybody. Mm -hmm. And it's scary how I'm thinking about how it was back then to now. And I think it's amazing that there's so much progress in, you know, the thought process of what children need or what people want to do after high school. So that's pretty dope. That's dope. Now, um, so what does it look like for someone who needs your services? Like, what is the process? Um, so pretty much I know like one of my first paid clients that I had like last year, you know, that was one of the questions I asked her, like, how did you find me? Like, how did you know you wanted, you need to, you know, to help and all that. And she was just saying how she was, you know, in a space in her life where she knew she needed guidance. Now I want to be very clear, receiving coaching and receiving therapy are two different things. Mm -hmm. You know, I like to get people like I play sports, I play basketball. So when you have somebody as a start, you have a starting five, right? Those people are chosen to start five. Why? Because they got skill, they got talent. What the coach is there to do is help them utilize it to win a game, right? And that's what a coach does. It helps you pull out those things you have, your strengths and things like that to help you execute your goals. Mm -hmm. Therapy, they're providing treatment, treatment for your traumas, treatment for anxiety, all of those things, two different things. And some people, when they call or they, they book me for discovery, I have to be very clear because I am a licensed social worker. I cannot dabble in the two, right? Like I have to be very clear that like I can't, and I, I do therapy for my job. So I'm like, we're not talking about your childhood stuff. Right. We're not getting involved with that. It's strictly about goal setting, strictly about where you're getting stuck at. What are the things you're trying to do? And then you're facing roadblocks. Um, so generally they may find me um, whether she found me through a hashtag. So whatever hashtag I was using, she was just trying to find some inspiration for her life. Um, and she found me through a hashtag. And I guess she just kind of been watching me like do live videos at the time and where I was posting. And she uh, booked a discovery call. And then 
after after we talked for like 15 minutes she was like she knew she was pretty sure she just wanted to like make sure like just talking to see if he was a good fit and she, I worked with her for four weeks um so that's typically how it seems like it's go with people where they're, they're watching you right um before they decide and that's the thing people have to buy into your story right buy into who you are um and to see if you really can help them and to be honest with you I think some people need help and they don't even know they don't know what they need help with. Mm -hmm. So that's the next thing I need to talk about now on my platform is how do you even know when you need somebody? Wow. Yeah. That's dope. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so um, I want to I want to get into the mental health portion of it. Well, so, so, so I do have most of my listeners listen on the pod, so they're not going to see the shirt that I'm wearing, but it does say anxiety. And I talk about it a little bit on my show. Mm -hmm. um, I try to be as transparent with that Mm -hmm. as I can be, um, but mental health is something that I feel like is like, we got to change the stigma towards that, especially, and I said this in my last episode, Black women, Black children, Black families, period. We have to change that narrative because I just feel like we're so hardened as a people. We've been so taught, we've been taught to like suppress that or there's nothing wrong with you and this and that. And it's like some of us, and I'm going to put myself into the equation, go through life just really like having a hard time. And mm -hmm. you really have to get to a point where it's like, okay, something's not right and I need help. Mm -hmm. So like, what has your experience been like with mental health or with um, coaching people with? Um, so... Yeah, so some people may, you know, say that they have anxiety or they have this worry, right, that maybe they, they want to create a brand or maybe they're trying to move out their parents' house. Now, again, I don't dig into the mental health piece because I have to keep that straight boundary with, we talk strictly just about goal setting mm -hmm. um, because people like to blur the two. Um, but I'm going to be transparent about my own mental health. So like I told you, um, when Leaving Inspire started, I started writing about navigating my 20s and dealing with mental health. So I had been on my own since I graduated college and I was like 22. So on my own, left all that. I didn't realize that I had something called an adjustment disorder. I was like, what? First, and, then, and I started therapy, um, going to a, a Black female therapist at 22. Okay. So when she said that, I was like, what is that? Like, what is that? So I looked it up for myself. I was like, yo, like I do have that. Like it takes me forever to adjust to things like any type of moves, anything with transitions. I even wrote a blog about it where it was like um, something about my, somehow anxiety and my adjustments not on fleek or something like that. I'll have to send it to you so you can read it. Cause I talk about this very thing. Um, but mental health, let me tell you, you don't get no support from your family. Everything is, you better be grateful for X, Y, and Z. I work hard for this. Why, what you up there pouting for? What you got to be depressed about is people don't got food. It ain't got nothing to do about that. Wow. It's, it's, it's about the fact that I'm struggling with something and I need some support. It may not be medication. It means that I need to talk to somebody that's unbiased, that's removed from the family because your family like to tell you how to feel. Nobody can't, you, your, your, your emotions is validated. People like to tell you how something went down. They like to put, put their view on what your experience was. Mm -hmm. Me and you can go grow up in the same house and can be exposed to the same trauma. And one of us can come out with this disorder and I will come out with the other one. Yep. Two different people and how our brains are. So that's why I started a blog to start to normalize it in our community, start to normalize the conversation so people can feel comfortable. Because you know why? People want to self-medicate. Well, I'm just going to smoke this weed. I'm just going to drink. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go in and just have sex with anybody because I, I got stuff that I'm trying to mask. And this is what happens. No one teaches that we don't grow up learning how to take care of ourselves and we don't grow up asking for help. And when stuff do go down, in a, in a household, it gets swept under the rug. Wow. Yeah. Are you preaching today. <laughs> You're like, wow, okay. This, this is real talk right here. People need to hear it. Because you, and then once you start talking to, to someone, you really see how damaged you were or something that you didn't even think triggered you or was traumatic for you. And it's like, oh my God, like, Oh, There's yeah. a reason why we are the way we are. We don't just want to be hard or, mm -hmm. you know, closed off or 
it's mm-hmm. just, it's, it's, it's so interesting how that works. So how important do you think it is for black women specifically to invest in their mental health? Man, black women, black men, kids, all of it. At this point, I, I've done, been a therapist to all of, we all, we all need it. First of all, if we want to just think of it on a racial level, that's already, that, that already just qualifies, right? Just I feel like that should be something that's in, in elementary school. We need a class on, you know, we need some, we need some therapy. Yeah. Yeah. Because the child yeah. is there. Mm-hmm. So us collectively as a race, that already is something. Um, we grow up in our households with certain conversations, what to look out for and where to go, where not to go, you know, especially not by yourself. Um, but for women, for black women, because a lot of statistics, a lot of black women that are mothers, right? They're doing it by themselves. So you got somebody trying to be full-time mom, full-time employer, and then a lot of time, employee or employer. And a lot of times they're going to school too. So they're juggling a lot. Right. You don't think that mom going through stuff? Right, right, right. But the the, the narrative of the black woman just so mm-hmm. do it all and get it mm-hmm. done and she doesn't need any help or mm-hmm. she has an attitude or no. Mm-hmm. It's just some things like I can't always hide if I have four things that went on that I had to handle before I saw your face and you just decide, oh, you need to smile. I might not be in a mood to. Mm-hmm. I might just need to have my neutral face and go about my business. Like, right. it's just, it's, it's, oh, we got to rush sometimes. That's, I'll say that. Yeah, that got to be another uh, another episode, but definitely the superwoman yeah. syndrome thing. Yeah, but then, then we're the angry black women. Right. But look what we're doing. We're doing everything from the muscle. Yeah. 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 It, it's so interesting you say that because even I, I, I see a therapist. I've been seeing a therapist since the beginning of this year, and she's amazing. Mm-hmm. And um, she always prides me on being very, um, what's the word that she likes to use and I like to use too. Um, like I'm aware of the things that I need work on. Like I'm, I'm pretty logical in the sense that I know, I know I need some work in a lot of areas. So um it's just interesting because she says, you know, you 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 have the you have all the pieces here. Mm-hmm. You just have to like tap into it and actively, um, you know, put it into whatever it's called. But for me, um, I told her, and I tell her all the time, I've all, I've never wanted to be the angry black woman, and mm-hmm. I feel like that in turn has caused me some issues like in relationships and friendships and stuff like that because I was always scared to be that woman that men or whoever thought that we are anyway. So I would be like, okay, don't say anything. Don't tell this person you feel a kind of way. Don't show any type of emotion. And I'm realizing like, that's a problem. So that's like the biggest thing I feel like I'm working through now with my therapist because it's like, okay, I got to, I got to do better because it's not, that's not mm-hmm. the way to be. Mm-hmm. And, um, but yeah, like you said, that's a whole different, that, <laughs> uh, that, that's a topic that needs to be discussed over and over again. But mm-hmm. how important do you think it is for women to educate themselves and like making good career choices? I, I- I think it's important for everybody, but because, and I'm gonna speak for our community, women are always looked at as um, the leaders, right? As the go-to, hence why our grandmothers are very important mm-hmm. in every black household. Like once grandma's gone, that, that'd be breaking up everybody. Like nobody don't do nothing mm-hmm. no more. Um, so a lot of times they're the ones that's holding, we're the ones that's holding families together. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not it's not the men that are uh, do a lot of this. That's kind of just not how it goes. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's very important. It's very important that as a village and that women are um, embracing each other and have safe safe spaces um, of support and accountability, right? And love, learning how to love on each other and not being against each other and fighting and butting heads, but working together. Because when women get together and we do some stuff, we make some shit happen. Yeah. Powerful. We kicking down doors and we shaking up the room. Absolutely. I agree. But it's like, I think 
a lot of us forget that until it's actually in the moment. It's like, yeah, this is what it's like when, when, we're, when, we, when we can come together yeah. without all the cattiness and all the other unnecessary stuff that has nothing to do with what the main goal is. It's like right. it's a beautiful thing to see and to be a part of. So mm -hmm. um, like with life coaching and how do you, what, how am I trying to put it? Because I know even like, I know that there has to be some level of unbiased, uh, I guess, responses and opinions from you when you're helping other people. So how do you maintain that, keeping your personal opinions out of something um, and, you know, staying professional with it? Yeah, I think that that definitely is taught throughout. Um, they they don't teach you that when you go for your certificate. Well, not the one I went to anyway, but really for real, for real. Uh, in my master's program, we're, we're taught about our facial expressions, right? And meeting a person where they're at um, and knowing that like the way people view things is our views aren't the same. So you have to leave your biases at the door. So if you're really going to go into the field and helping people, you got to you gotta be prepare for that and a lot of times when people are in these type of I don't know working spaces like being a coach or just dealing with people in a lot of their vulnerabilities you you would know if you're you can um, work with some sensitivity and you're a people person and people can receive you um, because I can't tell anybody that oh this is easy you shouldn't be stressed out about that or you should know how to do this while you're hitting that roadblock they don't have I need to be that person that they don't have that's why they, they're getting a coach you know what I mean so meeting with the per meeting a person where they are always getting right down to their level even though it may feel like it's like I'm up here and they down here because they're receiving the guidance and the clarity from me it's coming right back here like listen we're gonna walk in these shoes together on a journey and that's how that's how I do my for me my services yeah wow I'm just thinking about the things that you're saying it's like I literally talk about these things on my show and um my most of my experience my professional experience is working in behavioral health and in psychiatric hospitals running group homes all of that and um in addition to that i am a disaster response crisis counselor through fema for behavioral okay. health and mental health services so mm -hmm. when the pandemic hit it's like oh okay so this is now all those things you train for that intensive training that you did for this certificate <laughs> Now you got to put your boots to the ground right. and just like um, working in the field and working with um, that population. And that's volunteer, the DRCC work that I do. It's always been from, I started working in behavioral health and like in my twenties, I was super young. Mm -hmm. And that was always the goal to meet people where they are. So I just carry that in my life period. And I try to implement that in all the relationships that I have with people. And I mm -hmm. like to think that I'm someone who's non-judgmental for the first, for the most part. And I feel like you kind of have to have that type of mentality when working with the population that you work with, servicing the people that I um, work with, because it's easy to sit here and try to, you know, force your own opinions on people or tell them what they should and shouldn't be doing. And it's like, that's, that's a that's a fine line that 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 gets walked on, right? And it helps with the relationship you're trying to build. Mm -hmm. Helps with the rapport. When someone feels like you're on their on their level, and they they feel like they have somebody that that gets it, it helps. It helps. It helps them. Nobody wants to, and that's the whole thing. Even going back to the therapy thing and, and the black community. The whole thing with us is that we don't trust them because a lot of times the people that are across from us in those seats don't look like us. Mm -hmm. So in my days of being out in the field and going to people's houses, when black families saw me come in, they were like, oh, yo, our worker black, they was high. They felt like a, oh, all right, right. You know, I could talk this way. You're going to get me. I'm going to break this down like this and how my money is and how this, because you're going to get it. You know what I mean? They, it was like a, such a relief for the family. It was almost like a, a get together when I came around, like, yo, what's that shit? Covers and share coming because they 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 loved it versus if they saw someone coming in and didn't look like them everybody 
something like this. Like, right, right. don't say the wrong thing. Like, they're gonna get our stuff taken. Like, you, know, <laughs> you know. So it it was it's really a trust thing. So so now that like I'm in a, a therapist role and I'm serving people that look like us, I'm I'm loving it because they come in every week. They like, man, I'm doing a thing. I'm, I'm doing the homework you give me. I'm 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 excited. And that's the thing. I want us to live longer. Like, I want us to really be succeeding and live longer and not be scared to get help from any racial trauma that we've experienced. Um, or things have been swept under the rug uh, in our families. And that's just like my whole, I feel like that's the, the mission and vision of, of who I am. That's, that's that, like saving lives, inspiring people, educating people, especially I'm all about our, our community, so. <laughs> that's amazing. And speaking of that, that was actually the next thing I was gonna ask you, like in terms of community, like how important is authenticity to you? And how important is it for you to practice that within the community of people that you service? It, it ha- that's, I have to be that way. Like when I made the decision to say, oh, I'm going to be a personal development coach. I said, Tashira, you do know that you're going to have to be transparent and authentic about what's going on with you and how you invest in your personal development. Because even though that's the type of coach I am, I'm always investing in my personal development. I can't help other people if I'm not con- continue to feed myself. So they need to know, like, because a lot of times, like, even in whatever role, when you're in a helping role and somebody is in a, a messed up situation, they looking at you like you don't have none of those experiences. And I try to tell people all the time, when people come into these fields and these spaces, they are the people that they wish they had. Mm-hmm. We ain't come in there like we, you know, living from the suburbs and never don't know what it's like to go without a, a night of food or, right. you know, the sheriff come in to foreclose a house. Like we're in this spaces because we are trying to, we, we want to be those people that we wish we had. So that's all my platform and anything I write, anything I post. A lot of times I post stuff and I'm like, yeah, hey sis, yeah, hey sis, me. Like I'm talking about myself and I'm just sharing it with y'all. <laughs> wow, that's dope. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So as soon as I saw your page, I was like, oh, and I went through, like, I clicked the link and I was like, oh, I have to meet her. I need her on the show because you're like a unicorn out here. It's like people need this type, these types of services. And um, I just feel like I don't think we realize the type of resources that we have available to us. So you provide a platform in a community where it's like, here I am, you know, I, like, and it's amazing because now people are like, all right, I, I can, I can, I can move forward with, you know, whatever I, business idea I have or getting someone to, you know, or getting you to assist with what I want to, which, what, what path or what avenues I want to go, what, what do I have available to me? So that's mm-hmm. amazing. Um, how do people find you and you know request your services what is that process like I always tell people like if I'm in spaces where I get to maybe promote you know my brand or anything I always tell people come hang out with me like it's it's not always the sell the sell the sell right because that's not that's not where my heart is at yeah I'm not sitting here doing it for free Mm -hmm. right but my whole passion is to ensure that people get what they need um so I always tell people come hang out with me on Instagram all you gotta do is type in leave inspired um and then from there you can check everything out get to know who I am click in the link in my bio to either get like ebooks that I've written listen to uh, another podcast that I've been on or even look at the website even though I need to I'm gonna relaunch it but you know when you're getting started do what you gotta do (laughs) when you're getting started but I always tell people come hang out with me on on, um, Instagram because it's a, a lot. I have a lot of conversation. I don't have a podcast yet. Everybody keeps telling me I should get one, but mm-hmm. I should do one. But I do like to go live and bring on other people that have other brands, um, especially in our community, to inspire people. That's all I want to do. I want people to be able to go to my page and feel like, all right, I can I can do this today. Or I can do this tomorrow. Or you know what? Let me go and take care of myself. Like that's what I need people to do. Legit, what the name is? Leave inspired. <laughs> I definitely got that vibe from uh, coming to your page. Now, do you do your own marketing and branding? Yeah, it's I'm a one woman show. Like I listen, when you starting out, you gotta take every free thing you can. I mean, and and I was I had got some help from people who kind of was like, look, try this, try this out. And I did pay for um 
one, one of my friends is really good with the graphics on camera, but I was doing a lot of it by myself. Mm-hmm. And so I seen some of her uh, techniques and then I started doing it. But I do all of it myself. Like I don't have no team. It's, it's all me, which is a lot, but that's just where I'm at right now. And so you know God what? expands it. I feel like that makes things even more rewarding. You know, when it's like, this is all me. Can't nobody sit here and say, oh, I got this from, no, this is all me. And this is my blood, sweat, and tears. And this is what we're doing with it. Now, do you provide services for people outside of, well, women outside of Philadelphia? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, my first client was from North Carolina. Okay. So it doesn't even matter. It doesn't have to be like in the tri-state area. Okay. Yeah, I, no. like, that might be a question that somebody would want to know. So I said, let me ask because, you know, so that's good. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Now, before we get out of here, I do want to say thank you. I appreciate you. Like I said, as soon as I saw your page, I said, oh, yeah, yeah, I got it. I got to meet her. Mm -hmm. I do Instagram lives, too. So hopefully we can schedule that in the future, too, around the time that the episode airs Mm -hmm. that we um, set up to do a live, probably like within that week at some time. So I'll be contacting you for that. But tell the people how to find you and how to contact you and things like that. Uh, definitely uh, go on Instagram. That's mainly where I am. Um, and just type in Leave Inspire. Even if you put in a hashtag Leave Inspire, you will find a lot of my posts dating back from a long time ago. So come on in, hang out with me, check out videos. I'm going to be going live. Um, and also, if you have any questions about what I do, if you just want to book 15 minutes just to chit chat with me, just to just get a vibe and just see if it's something um, that works for you or even if I can help you get to the next thing you don't decide to book a whole thing just come and get inspired and rock out that's amazing so your Instagram one more time is leave inspired leave inspired so that's the regular way y'all that's not with you know the number I mean the letter in inspired <laughs> is exactly how it's <laughs> spelled that's exactly how it is but um, before we go, was there anything else that you wanted to say or let people know before we get up out of here? Um, just think about how you invest in your life. Think about what you want to do and your goals. And if you, you find yourself getting stuck and you find yourself that you're in spaces, the people around you can't help you, you need to get out those spaces ASAP. But also that support and help is at your fingertips. You on your phone all day anyway, start looking up people, start coming across some pages, X- and people do you know anybody that's doing x y and z get get in where you can fit in it wow and on that note thank you for your time i'll be talking to you soon i'll definitely uh continue to like i will well i will share and your stuff your information and things like that and send people your way like i said we'll get that live going and um, right. it's always a good time when i'm on instagram live my, my people really they tap in and they 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 that's find so some motivation or <laughs> find it a good time. But thank you so much again for your time. And as always, thank you to the guests and the listeners. And I'll see you guys next week.